welcome to this really fun tutorial by Promotion because today I'm going to show you how you can create a large crowd. So just follow me into After Effects. guessed it. Today's topic is crowd replication and there are actually many ways to get shots like this done. So first, you simply have enough extras or get a shooting permission during an actual game or concert or event. And the second method is to film only a small amount of extras or friends and then place them in small groups that you can later on come together pretty easy. Hey, and while shooting, the best way to do it is to have in mind that those different shots will later on be different layers in After Effects. So sometimes it makes sense to shoot people behind each other, for example on a green screen instead of next to each other to avoid endless hours of lovely roto. The next method would then be to use computer generated people from softwares like Massive or Gollum. Like in this shot, we did for Medici, Masters of Florence. Or sometimes it is not just a crowd, but a whole campground that you have to recreate. In this case, we could only rent half of it for the production, so we had to replicate it digitally. And last but not least, you film yourself or extras in front of a green screen separately from the actual shot. And then you have them in various angles, positions and actions and can reuse them as often as you want. So here is a fun shot I did a while ago where we also tried to get a donkey as an extra in front of a green screen. <laughs> but for all of those kinds of shots, it's super helpful to get some references. So best is to place yourself in the shot in various positions for lightning references. And if you have a huge depth to cover, it also makes sense to walk from the back to the front. So you have a reference for the height of the extras that you want to place later on. And if those tips were already helpful, then why not quickly subscribe to my channel because I am always trying to get as much useful information out as possible. And if you still have questions, simply leave me a comment and I promise I will answer back to all of you. So at first we will look at this static shot, where we only have to comp in a few people into an already existing empty stadium. And then we will bring this one step further by also creating a digital matte painting and integrate this into the shot. And as a last step, I'm showing you how to bring this one step further by integrating all of this into 3D space with some 3D camera tracking. So let's start this game directly in After Effects and let's take a look on what I have shot here. So this is a shot from a tripod, which will make it easier to place the crowd later on. And as you see, there are no people on the seats. I also took care not to cover too much of the seats with my body. And I also thought about putting the camera even higher, but that would have simply not looked like a nice composition for such kind of a shot. And I also think that this little extra, in this case, my head covering some of the extras really helps selling the illusion that it was filmed for real. So let's directly roto out my head and we will do that with the roto brush tool, which is super powerful. But before we do that, let's quickly trim our work area to only a few seconds. So the tutorial will be easier to follow along. So you can simply hit B for beginning and N for end and then click on the timeline over here and select trim comp to work area. So now let's start the roto. Important to know is that it only works on the layer itself and not on the composition. So how do we get to the layer? Well, simply double click on it and here we go. So now let's click here on the roto brush tool and simply paint on the parts you want to roto. And by using the alt button while painting, you can subtract areas that you do not want. So once I'm happy with the selection, I want to fine tweak the hair and I can do that with the refine edge tool and simply paint over the areas that need special care. And in this case, it's my curly hair. And now let's simply play this and it will calculate all the frames for us. And depending on your shot, this can take some time, but I'm not going to do that. 
As I do not move too much within the work area, I already know that it will work pretty good. So I'm not calculating all the frames, but I am directly freezing them with the freeze button. So think about it in this way. You could go over all frames, fine tweak them and find your way through the work area. And once all fine tweaks are done, you want to save all tweaks, all roto, all refined edge parts in the effect. And this is done by hitting the freeze button. But I want to simply use the adjustments I did on the very first frame for all the frames. So no need to go through all the frames first. But be careful. Normally I would recommend going through the frames before freezing to spot any issues. But hey, no risk, no roto. And a cool feature is to decontaminate the edge colors. That will neutralize all colors in the edges. So think of it as your spill color. If you shoot something on a red background and want to place it over a green field, the red edge will look distracting. So simply use this feature to take care of that. And also the motion blur on the edge will help a lot. Hey, and as this is a pretty render heavy effect, I'm quickly going to render this roto out as a PNG sequence. And important here is to also make sure to include the alpha channel into your render. So the background will be transparent later on. So now let's quickly leave After Effects and I'm going to show you a super cool page called Action VFX. And I will also post a link in the description. So if you use that link, you will also support my channel just to let you know. So over here you find hundreds of assets specially made for visual effects from explosions to smoke, debris, muscle flashes, clouds and also many free assets. You will also find a new product called sports crowds and you could either purchase the whole collection or individual clips. Hey, and for 90% of the shots, the 2K version will be totally enough as I am going to shrink them down a lot anyways. So if you need any asset for your shot, simply go to Action VFX and they will have something for you for sure. So back in After Effects, I have 10 of those clips in here already and simply drag them onto my footage and quickly scale and position them on top of my footage. And I do that on the top row of the seats and you will understand why in just a minute. And now I simply take two of them and define where they need to sit. So he's on the first seat, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is the tenth seat. So I place it next person over here. And now I can once again select all of them by hitting down by hitting down shift and go to the align tool. And if you don't see it, it's over here. Or simply go to window align. And now you can select the distribution of your layers and you want to have them distribute horizontally. So once I click that, they are perfectly aligned. And here a reference really comes in handy. So when you take a look at those clips, there's something really powerful about them. So when I scrub through them, you see they all have the same actions and timing, meaning they all cheer at the same time and stand up and so on. So you can really have fun with them. And I have created the first row of people. Now let's quickly color code them by selecting all of them. Click over here and choose a unique color because that will be super helpful later on. But let's randomize them a little more. You see, they all wear the same color, which is super cool if you want to create fans for a sports event. But in my case, I want them to look like random visitors. And I can do that with different ways. For example, with the change color or change to color effect. Both work in the same way and you define a color that you want to change as well as the color to change to. This is also super helpful, for example, to get the famous Sin City look where everything is desaturated except for one color. But anyways, I'm going to use the U and saturation effect for this as I want to be able to quickly randomize the color. And in my opinion, this is the fastest way. So I bring out the U and saturation effect on the first clip. Now I go to blue and boost up the saturation simply to see better which color is selected. And now I can find the exact color and fall off I want to use. So once I have that, I go back with the saturation and can now simply spin the U wheel. 
And you see, this line is the color we chose, and below that color line, we see the color that it will be mapped to. This is also a pretty cool workflow to fine tweak skin tones if they are a little bit off or tinted. So now I'm copying the effect, paste it onto the next layer, and spin the wheel a little bit more, and do the same thing for all the assets. And once done, I'm going to duplicate all assets and bring them on top. Now you also see what I meant with shoot your assets as if they were layers. And this is also why I started with the top row, because all of the other layers or assets will be on top of your layer stack now. And let's not forget to also color code our second row. This will make it easier to adjust the rows later on. And here's also a cool trick. You can now choose one of the layers, click on the color and select choose label color. And now the whole row is selected. And for a stadium shot that we are going to do, this will be super helpful, as there will be over 10,000 individual assets and therefore around 500 different rows later on. So organization is really the key here. But now let's randomize them a bit more by sliding them over a few frames and going through the color wheel. And you could also switch out some of the actors now and simply do all of that a few times. I'm going with four rows for this example here. And once I'm happy with what I have, I'm going to render out all of them as a separate asset as we have done before as a PNG sequence. And hey, we will later on use that for all of our shots. So it really makes sense to get this asset as good as possible. And this is also why we have not color corrected anything in here so far. And this is simply that we have all information still in our asset and can later on use that for all our shots and do the fine tweaks later on. So let me just quickly work on the randomization a bit more. And I'm trying to fill out that background here as good and as random as possible. Now I can also pre-compose them, call them the crowd asset and make sure not to adjust the duration of the time span. So now let's quickly go into the crowd asset and make this composition a bit longer, like maybe 15 seconds. Hit OK. Because now what we can do back in our crowd asset, we can duplicate it. And now we have a lot more to play with. So this will even be more randomized. And let's just flip that by going down minus 100 here in the scaling. So now let's quickly pre-compose this and call it crowd block. And just render this out as a PNG sequence. Composition, add to render queue. And here for the output module, we choose PNG sequence RGB plus alpha because we want to have an alpha channel, the transparency. Hit OK and just select your output folder and hit render. I have already pre rendered the asset. So let's at first place all of them into our shot. We could even flip some of them. And now let's also enable my roto layer. And to integrate it even more, let's duplicate the footage and mask out that fence here for even more integration. And for the color correction, I am quickly pre-composing all people and call them crowd one. As always, I'm starting with black and white levels. Therefore, I use this exposure slider to see when the white starts to clip in the footage. And at that exact sweep spot, I bring the whites of the crowd to also clip. Then I do the same for the blacks. And once that is done, I play with the gamma, which is in an easy way to understand the middle point between white and black. So simply slide it towards black to get more color from white to midpoint, which make it overall brighter. Or do the opposite if you need it to be darker. And remember, the black and white point will still be the same. And to finalize our color correction, let's simply play with our hue and saturation. But that really depends on the footage you shot. 
So now we can also bring out a camera lens blur and drag it onto our crowd. And by default, it is set to a value of five. So let's bring that down to really a small amount just to bring it out of focus just a little bit to match better with our plate because I am obviously in focus here. And now let's also create a shadow on top of the crowd so that it looks more integrated because the roof would normally cast a shadow. So therefore I'm creating a new adjustment layer and apply a levels effect to it. And now I'm just getting rid of the whites here, which makes all of the image darker. But obviously we only want the grout to get darker. So I'm just duplicating the grout, bring it on top of the levels adjustment layer and use it as an alpha mat. And you see now only the crowd gets darker. And now with the help of a simple mask, we can simply mask out the top of the crowd and feather it to get some fall off. And now this really helps in creating that realistic look. And voila, that is our first shot, but we will add more to this as we will go on in shot number two and three. And here in the next shot, I will show you two main points to make this one more realistic. The first is a digital matte painting, which in this case I bought on the internet, but I will show you how to create it from scratch in the third shot. So let's bring out the matte painting and position it. And for me, the most important part of this is always where to blend it with the real world. And obviously there are many possibilities here, but what I found is the more you can integrate from the original, the better. And also don't go with the obvious solution. It really makes sense here to think outside the box. So instead of only using this part, I will also try to include the sides here. So you can hardly see the difference between foreground and matte painting. And another thing that I have done here, besides adding all the crowned assets we just created, is that I added more random stuff like flags and banners and so on. Also the goal is a separate element. So for example, for the flags, I once again bought some footage on the internet. So let's quickly bring this one out. And what I've done here is simply keyed out this guy in this case here with the key light effect. So simply drag and drop it onto the footage and for the color choose the sky color. But for some of the shots you could also use a luma mat or a color key. And now I have just randomly placed it all over the crowd. I also took some people off the crowd assets and placed them randomly where the matte painting and the original footage plate interact to cover up even more. So the goal here is to bring out as many different assets as possible to really give it a more chaotic feel like in the real world. And with all of this in mind, let us now concentrate on our hero shot, the 360 degree camera move around this very talented soccer player. start by 3D tracking the footage because this takes some time to analyze and the good thing is that I can work on the shots while it is analyzing. So I simply right click on the footage, track and stabilize and then click on track camera. What I also like to do is to enable detailed analysis over here. Therefore the track will be improved but it also takes more time to calculate. But as I told you before, I'm using the time now to create the stadium from scratch. So here's a quick run through of the stadium I created from my shot. And this is simply to show you how you can create something awesome from scratch. Cause if you break down your tasks in easy to do steps, then you can really create anything you want. And I think you would not have guessed that I painted this stadium with some masks and layers. So I started with two layers with a gradient ramp effect applied to it for the fronts of the stadium. Then I added the seats and some columns. Again, all just layers with the gradient ramp effect to give it some variation. And then I created some seats. It's just a blue layer with some masked outlines. Same for the top seats. 
And this is just that something is shimmering behind the people when we add them later on. The black holes are also just masked out from a black layer. And those are the stairs. And they are again just one layer that I scaled down with a gradient ramp effect to it. And then I stacked them to really have a stair and then masked out the stairs in the composition. And again, an adjustment layer with the levels effect as we have done before to give it some depth and more realism. And now I can place them beneath those two gray lines so they are automatically cut off. And when I also bring them beneath the shadow, you see they are already positioned in depth and have the right color. And then again, I'm just duplicating them and simply position them all over the place. Could also bring the stairs above them and make sure to always place them on top of each other. So you start in the top row and then adding them downwards. asset a final asset I added once again some flags all over the place as well as some banners and I also created a flashlight effect so I created a new layer and applied the lens flare effect to it adjusted the brightness and the center and simply trimmed the comp to only one or two frames and then again you can go crazy with this asset and place it everywhere and you could go on forever with randomizing this at people in the stairs for example I think this looks pretty good for now. So as we have done before, let's render this one out as a PNG sequence with an alpha channel and quickly jump to the future. Because here in the future, I now have the asset ready and also my 3D track is ready. At least ready to work on a little bit more. Because you see all those crosses, they are all meant to be on a fixed part of the image. But I am not static. So we need to go through our footage and remove all the wrong crosses. So therefore the analysis will work best. And you can also use your mouse as a lasso for that now when you have the effect selected. So once all the wrong crosses are removed, After Effects will automatically reanalyze the scene. So now let's create the 3D scene. When you hover over those crosses, you see that you get those triangles which represent a plane or a planar surface in 3D space. Hey, and most tutorials out there tell you now to look for a matching triangle and create a camera and solid and so on, but no, 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 no. Hey, we have hundreds of crosses here, so let us take the best and not the ones that After Effects suggests for us, okay? I always try to use three four or even more crosses that are pretty far away from each other, but still on the same planar surface. And this is to compensate for any uneven parts of the surface, in this case, the soccer field. Think of this in that way. You want to place a huge plate on those crosses and this plate should then be your ground. So the further away the crosses are, the more stable your plate will later on be. And you can select as many crosses as you want by holding down shift while selecting. So now you can finally right click on them and create a camera. Perfect. And we can now also create null objects at the positions where the stadium should be later on. In my example, I used the asset four times to create the whole 360 degree stadium. But now let us maybe concentrate on only two sides of the stadium. So we skip through the footage with the tracker selected because then we see the crosses. And when we think we found one that is representative for the position, I simply click on it and generate a null object. And I also do that for the second side of our stadium. So now let's bring out the stadium asset and make it 3D. Now go to the null object and hit P to get its position properties and directly copy them with Control C and paste them, Control V, on the position of the stadium. 
And by the way, you could do the same like we have done before to generate the floor and camera. You could select more crosses or markers on the position of the stadium and instead of creating a null, you could create a solid and therefore you could now also copy the rotation. But in my testings, I found that it is more important that the stadium is rock solid connected to the floor at first and the rotation can be adjusted super easy later on. So once we have that set up, let's simply do this once again with the second asset. And here you can simply copy all position properties and then rotate it by 90 degrees to match perfectly. And like we've done in our first shot, I have already rotoed out my head with the roto brush tool. So I'm just bringing that out here and enable it. Oh. Hey, and this is already the end of this tutorial. Well, almost. All you have to do now is to turn on motion blur for all your layers and also enable it for your composition. So I really hope you learned something today about crowd replication and how to best use it and reuse your assets to quickly get to a stage where you can really start to art direct the look and feel. Hey, and if you missed something or if I missed something, then leave me a comment down below and if you got inspired, maybe even motivated to try it out on your own, then feel free to give me a thumbs up or even subscribe to my channel. Hey, and if you also want to use the assets that I used from Action VFX, there's a link directly below this video. So for now, I wish you a lot of fun creating crowds in After Effects.